It's Wednesday the 8th of February and thanks for clicking on to the uh, 79th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Yes, an unusual day to do a Global Weather Report but I did miss out on Sunday and uh, there is plenty going on around the world to catch up on. So instead of lagging too far behind I thought I'll do a quick Global Weather and Climate Report today and uh, see what's going on. This is an infrared imagery showing California and the remarkable record-breaking rains that we have seen unfold across Southern California in particular. UCLA in downtown Los Angeles has recorded over a foot of rain, over 12 inches of rain inside a 24-hour period. And it's all courtesy of a very powerful jet stream extending from Asia right away across the Pacific and into California and we are going to see more significant rainfall over the next few days here so extreme conditions to say the least like I said this is a tweet here by um, Nahel showing that the U University of California Los Angeles received more than a foot of rain 12.46 inches to be exact in the last 24 hours as a powerful atmospheric river moves through the region. That's about two thirds of a year's worth of rain fallen within a single day. So dramatic stuff, remarkable stuff taking place in Southern California. And looking at other information here, this is off ABC News. Downtown Los Angeles sees record rainfall. Downtown LA seen 4.10 inches of rain on Sunday. Break the old record of 2.55 inches set all the way back in 1927. As of noon Tuesday, the area saw a total of 8.13 inches of rain from this storm. Sunday was also the third wettest February day, while tying for the 10th wettest day since 1877. The wettest day ever recorded in downtown LA was 5.88 inches set all the way back on the 2nd of May 1958. Here's some impressive rainfall totals here. Bel Air 11.64 um, inches of rain. So nearly a foot of rain in several locations as you can see here extending anywhere from Woodland Hills all the way up to Bel Air. And uh, that is, uh, is rather impressive stuff if you ask me. Very powerful winds also has been recorded um, with over 100 miles per hour in uh, parts of Southern California as well. Even Inverness, which uh, is not Inverness, Scotland, but Inverness, Southern California, recorded a gust of 89 miles per hour in recent days. And it looks as if we're not done with this just yet. By the way, before we go on, actually, look at this radar look, loop here um, of the hose pipe of moisture that had been slamming the LA basin and uh, the uh, surrounding vicinities over the last day or so here. It's simply a hose pipe of moisture connecting uh, the central Pacific with Southern California. This is a very El Nino type situation unfolding, may I add, and probably not overly dissimilar to some of the rain uh, events of uh, in and around the 97 to 98 uh, Super El Nino. And I know uh, folk will jump on that and say this is a very different matter altogether. Well, it is in the sense that we don't have uh, the same type of atmosphere in terms of the 97-98 versus the 2023-24 El Nino. But there is some similar characteristics going on with regards to the atmospheric river connecting a uh, tropical Pacific with California. So before we continue to look at other stuff going on around the world at the moment here, this is the jet stream chart here of the GFS. And you can see the very powerful jet stream roaring in off the Pacific across Southern California and into the Western and Central heart Heartland of the United States. Now, what we have got is an, a renewed powerhouse jet coming off the, uh, off the Asian continent extending out over the pacific ocean here so we do have more systems expected to slam the west coast of california in the coming days here notice here that we do have the the very very powerful jet stream moving across the pacific and that will eventually 
reach the west coast of the United States by the time we reach the middle portions of February. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what takes place with more atmospheric river events for the west coast of the United States here. So very, very extreme situation unfolding across the uh, across the west coast of the United States. And we will, of course, continue to monitor the situation as we go forward here. Meanwhile, if we skip back across the Pacific to the other side and look at Japan, while we've seen some remarkable swings in temperature across Japan and the Tokyo area over the last six to eight months with record breaking warmth, we have seen uh, some spells of cold also. We did see the first significant snow in the greater Tokyo area back over the weekend. And this is a video shot by our friend James Reynolds, a storm chaser based in Japan, recording heavy snowfall, but also thunder snow, a re relatively rare event and potentially a relatively rare event in the Tokyo area. But this is a fantastic image from James Reynolds capturing the thunder snow during this heavy burst. If you play through the loop, And you can hear the crack of thunder in the background. So beautiful scenes coming out of the Tokyo area. I, I did have the pleasure, of course, of, of uh, visiting uh, the stunning country of Japan back in November. And uh, I have to say, I would have loved to have seen the, uh, the snow in Tokyo back uh, when I visited, but uh, it was a little bit early in the season. But uh, this is a tweet here by uh, uh, Sayaka, I think that's how you pronounce it. I think that's how you pronounce her name anyway. Uh, but Sayaka um, often tweets uh, meteorological stats from Japan, and uh, this is representative of the 24-hour snowfall that we've seen back during the weekend in the, uh, in the central Honshu region of tokyo and you can see nine centimeters of snow fell within a 24-hour period in the greater tokyo area and we did see some beautiful scenes in and around the uh, city itself with them um, folks enjoying the winter landscape of a uh, of tokyo so you can see another tweet here by uh, lala go showing the amazing snow event The world's largest city, of course. So this, by the way, is Cape Breton in Nova Scotia, Canada. And check out this, a massive snowstorm that took place a few days ago in the Cape Breton and Nova Scotia area dropped an astonishing amount of snowfall inside a couple of days. We had 12-foot snowdrifts that essentially paralyzed communities in this part of Nova Scotia. And this was an amazing tweet here sent in by, just bear with me a second, sent in by Adam Hill. So he says that the snowstorm has covered Great Cape Breton. I have 68 feet of snow in my yard with 12 plus foot drifts. The snow is relentless. We have a local state of emergency and uh, some remarkable scenes captured by Adam Hill. So here's another tweet here by East Coast Drone Man on that Nova Scotia storm. He goes on to say that you know it's bad or good Nova Scotia storm when you have to do this to find your vehicle. This is my sister, Sydney River, Cape Breton, digging through about 100 centimetres of snow. So that car is buried underneath that snow. Just remarkable stuff. Wouldn't it be a wonderful to see snow uh, in the, the UK as bad as that but they uh, well we can't we can't handle a couple of centimeters never mind uh, you know a hundred plus centimeters but they uh, were seeing more scenes coming out of Nova Scotia from the remarkable snowstorm that took place here remember that it is only um, you know a very short time ago that we we're talking about record breaking warm temperatures in this region of Canada as well has been a very very mild winter overall 
in the in not just the eastern Canada but the, the majority of North America. So moving on, we have seen a lot of record breaking warm conditions for the month so far through the first what eight days of February. You can see the bullseye of warmest conditions anywhere out with the Arctic over the central swathe of North America here. We do have a lot of warmth extending across Europe and across the majority of northern Eurasia, if you notice here. But below average temperatures, which is interesting, across much of China, Mongolia, uh, we have seen some um, cold conditions uh, even across parts of uh, Tokyo, Japan, hence the heavy snowfall that we've seen here. Northern Africa has been very, very cold to start February. We've seen uh, Australia with uh, a bit of a tail two halves, northern portions above average southern portions below average as you can see here remarkable heat ongoing across uh, many areas of south america here anywhere from uh, chile uh, argentina up through brazil and um, the only areas that are really are majorly cold is northern africa parts of china mongolia uh, alaska has been quite cold compared to average and greenland has been colder compared to average as well the UK and Ireland is fairly warm compared to average. You can see here, if we look at Europe specifically, we have got a fairly warm continent overall. What will be interesting is to see how things pan out as we go forward. Now, this is a quick look at the multi-model run of both Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation. You can see here the ECMWF deterministic has the uh, Arctic Oscillation below the neutral line showing a negative we also have uh, the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation below the neutral line also. So a negative uh, Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic o Oscillation is seen by both ECMWF. This is the GFS deterministic. This is the uh, ECMWF ensemble. And you can see that the North Atlantic Oscillation is projected to go negative. Arctic Oscillation is negative also. So therefore, you would say to yourself that you would expect to see the uh, a return to colder conditions mid and late month. This is off the GFS extended ensemble for the upcoming seven day period. And as we play through this loop, you can see here that the cold lingers on through the middle and latter half of February here. So it looks as if the GFS ensemble, the extended, has below average conditions extending through to the end of the month which i think is rather interesting if you ask me here's the ecmwf weeklies and you can see upcoming seven days cold across central and northern uk warm than average further south bitterly cold across scandinavia as we play through this loop in seven day increments the cold maintains itself across northern europe Notice here that milder air is just to the west of the UK and Ireland, representing higher pressure in this region of the world. But notice here how the UK and Ireland, possibly not so much Western Ireland, but certainly the UK mainland, tries to hold on to below average temperatures. And then the kind of cold starts to kind of try and regroup as we move late February into the early portions of March here. So I think we've got very, very interesting times to come. The Manjulian Oscillation, real quick, you can see here that it is in Phase 7, and it's kind of bouncing around between Phases 7 and 8. It looks as if it's going to try and collapse into the null phase in Phase 8 and into 1. That would be promotional of, uh, of, of, of northerly blocking as well. So while a lot of people are kind of jumping under the bandwagon that winter is over, I still stand by the ideas that I've had all along that uh, this month will turn progressively colder as we move through the middle and second half of February and into the month of March here. I think it's all to play for when it comes to the cold weather pattern and, uh, and uh, you know, further down the road. Finally, real quick, World Climate Service, here's an interesting tweet uh, released yesterday. Impressive stratospheric action in today's 12Z Canadian Nearly half of the ensembles reversed the mean zonal winds at 100 millibars. The last time that the 100 millibar 60 degrees north reversed in winter was during February 2010. So there you go. Interesting times to come. Like, share and subscribe. You know the drill. And I'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more weather updates. Bye for now.